Hi everyone, it's Lauren and here are my reviews for all of the books that I read in the month of April. I didn't actually finish that many books in April, so I've only got four books to talk to you about today, but I have been sort of midway through reading some other things. So there'll be some more reviews coming um, very shortly, I hope. The first book that I finished was Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. This was a reread for me. I've already read Great Expectations, but I read it again because it is going to be my next instalment for my page to screen series where I talk about the different adaptations of a classic book. If you don't know, the story of Great Expectations is about a young boy called Pip who is raised by his sister and her husband who is a blacksmith and they're, they're fairly poor. And then one day out of the blue he gets told that when he comes of age he is going to be a young man of property and he has great expectations put upon him. It features some of the classic Dickensian characters such as Miss Havisham who was uh, betrayed on her wedding day and therefore has stopped the clocks in her house at the exact point when she was going to get married and she lives in her wedding dress. This isn't my favourite Dickens, I've got to say, but I did quite enjoy rereading it and reminding myself of the story. One of the things that bugs me a little bit about this book is that it uses a lot of contemporary references and jokes, which would have been very funny for Dickens's audience, but as a modern reader it maybe slows the plot down a bit. For example, side characters performing in an amateur dramatics and Dickens kind of basically describing the entire play that this person is in and you know it being very funny but very much besides the point um so I, I could have done without some of that but yeah it was fine it's nice to revisit classic books sometimes and remind yourself of the story and feel like you know it very well and it, it's just nice sometimes um, to revisit that the second book i finished in april was an attempt to get me out of a bit of a mini reading slump that i was having and it was i'll give you the sun by jandy nelson which is a ya book and yeah, I think this delivered what I expected it to and it's very, very easy to read and it did kind of get me, um, get me back into the habit a little bit. This follows twins Noah and Jude and you get the story from each of their perspectives, from Noah um, in his diary I suppose from when they were 13 and then Jude when she's about 15, 16 and you know that something terrible has happened in between um, those two points and as the book goes on you're kind of going back and forth in time trying to work out their full story. As someone who doesn't read YA very much I did find this very enjoyable. You do have, uh, both of them have their own love stories and you also, it, it just really reminded me of that really awkward time when you're kind of 13, 14 and trying to impress people and um, yeah the angst, the angst was real. Having read The Sky Is Everywhere by Jandy Nelson as well, I, I must say I do think her writing is quite gimmicky which is a shame because it, it doesn't really need to be and the example of that I'll give is that when Noah is writing um, in his section of the book he's an artist and every so often he'll write um, an example of a self-portrait so he'll be talking about say him feeling upset and then it'll be like self-portrait boy alone in a forest or something and then you keep going and I just thought this this book didn't need it and similarly Jude is very obsessed with superstition um, that her grandma has left her so in between some of her paragraphs there'll be a kind of superstition like um, you know put seeds in your pocket to ward off love or something like that and again, the sky is everywhere was like that as well there's just random poems in between and I did feel a bit like Jandy, come on, <laughs> we don't need to be so pretentious, do we? Um, I didn't really think that worked, but if you kind of took away some of these devices that she was using, I thought the story was really nice. The next book I finished was A Whole Life by Robert C. Toller, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly, um, who is an Austrian author, and this book has just been longlisted for the Man Booker International Prize. This is about a man who is born and raised and dies in the in an Austrian valley and it kind of follows his whole life, um, the impact of the, the Second World War, how tourism changes his village and just little things that happen. It's one of those books where, I mean, it's very short, it covers a whole lifetime and yet it's kind of more about the little things that happen rather than the big events. I was really looking forward to reading this book and to be honest, I was quite disappointed by it. I don't know why and that could just have been my expectations going in but I didn't really get it. It was fine and I enjoyed it and I thought it was interesting but it was just okay. Um, I thought the prose was fine. I didn't, it, it didn't move me as much as I hoped it would and I'm actually struggling to understand why that is. I, I can't really put my finger on 
what I wanted from it um, but it, it probably just wasn't really my thing and I finished off the month reading a book of short stories which was Multitudes by Lucy Caldwell. Lucy Caldwell is an Irish writer, she was born in Belfast, she is a playwright, she's a novelist and this is the first um, piece of her writing that I've, that I've ever come across. I really really enjoyed this collection, it's 11 short stories all of which focus on the themes of growing up and not necessarily growing up, more like the loss of innocence, kind of the moment you realise that the world is more complicated than maybe maybe it seemed, the moment people lose their light, naivety, and a lot of the stories focus on uh, the kind of teenage years, or, or very early teenage years, so maybe between sort of 11 and 14, and oh my goodness, the way that she evokes those feelings of awkwardness, and the way that um, children at that age are just awful to each other, it just it just really, really hit home for me. It just really reminded me of, of my own childhood, or it just really resonated with me. It's not exactly the same, a lot of it is set in Belfast. But her tone and just, just the way she brought these stories together was so impressive in how um, they really encompassed all of the awkwardness that you feel, the not really understanding who you are, not knowing why you do the things that you do, and maybe putting yourself in, in dangerous situations or situations which you shouldn't be putting yourself in, uh, wanting to fit in with, with other people at school and um, I, th I think it was just really, really well observed. There are some more um, adult focused stories in here as well. There's a woman who has lost her daughter and there's another story of a couple who, whose newborn baby has had to go into intensive care and some of those stories were, were good. I felt like um, the collection as a whole for me seemed much stronger when it was focused on, on, on the younger elements of growing up and although I enjoyed those stories I felt like they were a little bit out of place in this collection but on the whole really really impressed with this collection I read it straight through I think I, I, I read it on a train and, and I just read it in one go and it, it didn't get boring to me at all um, I really enjoyed all of the stories so I'm pleased that she's written other things and I'm pleased to be introduced to a new author so I'm really looking forward to investigating some of her novels now so I would love to hear from you if you've read any of these books I always enjoy discussing them with you in the comments if you're new you can subscribe to more videos by clicking the red button on the lower left hand corner of this video and I will see you next time Bye! are inspired by Jane Eyre in very different ways. So we have some that are viewpoints of different characters such as Grace Paul or Mr. Rochester, um, some which involve a character reading Jane Eyre to someone and I think some other stories which are just inspired by the events and themes of Jane Eyre. So I think this is going to be really exciting.